wow that's a pretty in that's a busy image behind you You know if that was my image (laughs) john i'm glad you brought that up because if i wanted to give you a comment on that image if that were my image i'd put it in the trash can no kidding hit hit the button it's it's worthless (laughs) my buddy paul levy who i think we've spoken about before i would say what do you think of this and he would if we were like you know uh uh uh, on a trip together and we're in a you know, hotel room and we're sharing it, he would go and he'd hit my delete key. <laughs> That's what I think of your, I still uh, like uh, Dan's uh, it's your pixels. <laughs> it's, hey, it's your pixels. If you want to, if you want to yeah. you know, use them that way, feel free. Or my old buddy, uh, Bill Strom back in film days, I would have him look through my viewfinder. And I was, I mean, truly excited because I was a new photographer back then. And I'd be so excited and Bill would just go, did you mean to put the tree right in the middle? <laughs> or he would say, it's your film. If you want to waste it, feel free. Yeah. Well, that was true back then. I that mean, was really true. back. Every then. shot you didn't, you didn't want to waste it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, you know, thinking about those dear friend, my gosh, both of those guys have passed away. Bill got, but uh, melanoma in his eye. Mm. and ended up passing away from cancer and then my dear friend dan who you knew dan you know my best friend ever and uh until you of course now you're I was about now to dan's gone. you've been promoted <laughs> to best friend status but uh yeah i think about dan and you know being gone but you know we were we were thinking about what else to talk about and i can't help but remember being out photographing dan and i photographed a lot together we did a lot of workshops together too but Something that would happen, and I think it's an important thing to maybe share with the audience is this. We would be out and, you know, Dan and I are different people. You and I are different people. And he would see something and we'd pull over and I'd have this thought of like, why are we stopping? I mean, there's nothing here to photograph. And he would look at me and say, you kidding me? He said, you you don't see that over there? And I'd say, it's just not doing anything for me, Dan. I'm sorry. So literally I would sometimes just stay and look at my phone in the car you know yeah take a nap <laughs> eat an apple do something and you know and and sure enough that same darn day we'd be out in the afternoon and i'd say dan 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 stop 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 and he'd be like why <laughs> it's noon horrible harsh light john what, what do you see it's like would you just trust me and turn the damn car around i want to go back and photograph that spot you know and he would just look at me like i don't get it And the point of all that I bring this up for is, you know, sometimes it's okay to give yourself permission to, that you're not feeling it, that you're not seeing it. But I don't know about you, Cole, but in those moments when Dan was going, oh man, I got to stop. I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why can't Mm. I see what he's seeing? Oh my gosh. He's so much more creative than I are. He's a better for, I am a better photographer than I am, you know? And, and that stuff that we talk about all the time is just so hard. So I really like you had to, to learn to be creative and get beyond all that tech 30 years of that wasteland that you were in, that you talked about. For me, it's hard I'm a professional photographer, thus I should be able to create on demand, you know, and sometimes I just give myself permission to just not photograph. It's okay. Do you ever have those moments too? Sure. And that's why I don't like photographing with other people because I might stay somewhere for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, I hear I'm, I'm worried. Oh, they're sitting there with that look, you know, I got to go. And I hate that, but I've got two thoughts. Two, I've had two different feelings when that's occurred for me. The yeah. one is, I'm just not feeling it today. Yeah. Versus, what's wrong with my vision that I can't see something here? Wait a minute. Maybe my vision doesn't see anything here, and that's okay, too. Okay. Um, because we do see different. We've all had the experience of standing at a location, and oh. two people will come home with vastly different interpretations we see differently and that also means that sometimes you'll want to stop and i'm thinking why or vice versa yeah Yeah. sometimes we're just not in the creative mood we in our workshop we had uh i I forget which workshop we had somebody who said they've been in a photographic slump yeah a lot of times randy that on the first day that's what he said i've just been in a slump and then he put us on the spot and he said i'm hoping you guys can help get me out of it and i think you and i looked at each other and went 
how the hell do we do that? <laughs> Lumps serve a purpose, I believe. I don't think we should run from them or hate them. Yeah. Just as I've, sorry for repeating myself, just as a, fa a farmer leaves a field fallow for a season to rejuvenate it, sometimes we just need to relax, let go, and not be worried. Yeah. And then they always say, yeah, but I'm so worried it won't return. I've had that feeling probably a dozen times in my life. Oh my gosh, it's not going to return. It's done. It's over. I'm out. Yeah. It always returns. Relax, let go, enjoy the downtime, uh, take some long naps, read some books. And at some point, you're just going to start feeling creative again. Yeah. That's my experience always. Yep. And that and that's the thank you for, for really eloquently putting that because that's essentially what the message was that was on my mind to talk about today i i shared it in a different way but that's to me that's a lot more meat on that bone of it's okay and i love that you say go read a book you know go to a museum if that's what you like to do just do something else but don't put the pressure on yourself to go half to create but it's interesting you know i, I bet rick rubin who we've uh, spoken about before with his book on creativity there are some schools of thought that say you should do the work no matter what, right? You push should, through it. Yeah, push through it. And you get up and like writers, I hear, I've been reading a lot about writers lately and they they all talk about, they set nine o'clock every morning and they've had yeah. their breakfast, they've had their coffee and they're going to go in and just start typing. So I do think, you know, it's a little bit contradictory to what we've talked about before with just do the work and finish the work. But I think, you know, again, semantics are in this a little bit. Yes, I, yes, yes. I do think there are times when we have to give ourselves permission that we're just not feeling it and that it's just going to be OK. And then maybe, you know, a couple of weeks down the road, we can then do the work and maybe push through it a little bit. But but I think there is value. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. There is value in giving yourself permission to do, that it's OK to not have to be creative. We're, we're so lucky to have this as an avocation and not a vocation where we don't have to show up and be creative Monday through Friday. We don't have to perform on demand. We don't have to constantly do better work than the last job, yeah. but we can just do it. That's why it's it's an avocation. We do it because we love it. We, love we are it. amateurs because we are without training. We do it for the love of it. We're not earning a living from it. And we're just lucky as can be to have that uh, that in our lives and not have to perform it's nice well it's been a good session you know i uh, at, it's been what six or seven, maybe eight weeks that we've been doing these with the same shirt so i'm, I'm sure it's starting to stink we should probably go to the dry cleaners next but cole always good to be where are you off to next you're going to hawaii for a month aren't you i'm going to hawaii yeah yeah good well that's great enjoy and i'm off to uh charleston and uh, and then down to the Smoky Mountains, which is uh, one of my favorite places. I love the Smokies. I, I I would say we have a spot open, but by the time this one airs, we'll be in the Smokies probably. But uh, yeah, yeah. Good to see you, buddy. Enjoy Hawaii. Hey, see ya.